Right, future Steve, just put this towards the beginning. There's a lot involved with this, so we'll just brush over the, the basic stuff and I'll put links in the description so you can deep dive into this and read more into it. But um, a lot of, a lot of um, building inspectors will help you too. And obviously architects should be helping you if you've got an architect involved in your job. So let's press on. There you go, Mike's are showing up now. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. Great, let me know when you're ready and I'll start talking. Ready when you are, fire away. Okay. So, so conservation of fuel and power, part L, approved document L. Yeah, that's the orange bit. Yeah, purple. Okay. Indigo. <coughs> Do you want to change your glasses? No. You sure? Let me work once, so. Yeah, we not work, eh? Hey? Mm, work gear, talking just, about The other one just looks smarter. I'm not, I'm not going upstairs. Okay. What are you trying to say? Do I not look, look good in my videos? I'll blow your glasses out then. Like um, Spy Kids, George Clooney's guy is, is um, removable. <laughs> Eye blacker. George Clooney? He was the president in Spy Kids. And then there's at the end of the first movie. George Clooney? Yeah. You sure? Yeah. He was the president and he was there with blacked out eyes. Then he takes it off because it's like glasses. Right. Right, anyway. That's, that's, a, that's a mate you need to get rid of already. That's true, yeah. Go. Action. Welcome. This is a bit of a different video to our usual ones. We're going to go through a little rundown of the building regulations for our extension work, which its official name is the Conservation of Fuel and Power Approved Document L. Also otherwise known by everyone's just part L building rigs. But these are the regulations that we've had for the last year now. And these are, this is what we follow when we're doing extensions from slab up to uh, our finished product. It's what everyone has to follow. Yeah. This, this video is no, is like, we're no experts. We're giving you information that we've gained over the last 12 months doing extensions and stuff, which we've just muddled our way through basically because the last 12 months building inspectors have been doing the same as us and learning what all the new regs are and what, what works, what doesn't. And then we're just trying to pass on what we've found out to other people just to make it easy for other people. And it's just an easy video. What we'll do is, if we give any information during the video, we'll, we'll drop links into the description so you can just drop in there and go onto there. And that's where there's loads of information there, where we've got a lot of our information today. So a bit of a backstory. I started in um, middle to late 80s. And back then, um, during my apprenticeship, we were building houses. So back then, we were doing 50 mil cavities. We were insulating our cavities full fill fiberglass, but a lot of places still went insulating the cavities. In fact, we're still using angle iron lintels and timber lintels and concrete lintels in the early 80s. So um, over time, building regs change, and especially the last few years, it's become really, with the climate change and all this palaver, it's become more and more important to conserve energy, which means more insulation, which means new regs, bigger cavities, thicker insulation, wider lintels. So we're going to go through a few of those little things with you and just say what we use, what we don't use, what's available, and just try and help you if you're just starting off to give you just a rough idea. Because obviously if you're doing a job by building regulations, the inspector will be checking all these things. And at least if you know in advance some of these details, you can go forward then without having to worry about anything being pulled up. So after the part L was introduced, I think I've seen it back 2021, but 2022 also, but it gave like a grace period. So it actually started being enforced properly in June, 2023. And if your extension was passed for planning before that, then you were allowed to build it with the old 100 mil cavity. And back then the U value you had to hit was 0.28. Now since 2020, so since June 2023, that is now 0.18, which makes a massive difference. Uh, that, that, that's the, um, that U value is a calculation of um, heat loss through the materials of the wall, whatever it's the blocks, bricks, timber, render, whatever. But um, that's worked out as the total. So you, you, whatever you use in that wall, the, the combined sum of the U value has got to be below 0.18. And that's the magic number. 0.18 or below, and it's going to get stricter. 
Right. Some examples of meeting these new regulations, as you may have seen some of our videos now, when we're doing a brick structure, it's brick, 150 mil cavity of insulation, and then fiber light blocks. And then if we're doing block and render, if it's a block and render extension, we, we have to use fiber lights on the outer skin and the inner skin because using concrete blocks is um, a form. I'll just explain this a bit. You've, you've got seven Newton concrete blocks, which are used below ground and for structural stuff. Um, we used we used them on an extension, which is going to be rendered. We just assumed they should be seven Newton block. And when um, the building inspector spoke to us about it, they said seven Newtons are very, very poor. Structurally, they're great, but thermally, they're rubbish. They're very, very bad. They're cold. They let the cold through. So um, what we had to do on that extension, I'll show a couple of pictures or a couple of videos and clip them in. But um, we had the block, cavity, block. And then the Robbies had to put... Um, battens and insulation on the inside and then the renderers had to insulate the outside so basically we had insulation block insulation block insulation so the wall ended up 350 mil anyway so if we'd have done it um fiber lights 150 cavity fiber lights then it could have been rendered straight on and um plasterboard straight on so you can still use the concrete but you've got to put extra insulation which is kind of it's easy to build a cavity wider then add the extra insulation on the outside and the inside. And alternatives as well is using different kinds of insulation such as Kingspan. Yeah, you've got, you've got different, you've got extra therm, Kingspan. What we're going up here is we, one of our local builders merchants, they actually had a uh, leaflet with the examples of what we're... Um, Take it in close. To meet. Yeah, obviously we'll show a close up of this in a bit and we'll tell you where you could possibly find any, but that's, that's like, this is one of our main reference points as we've been going off. This has been so helpful to us. That's it. Your plasma partel extension solutions to reach 0.18. And um, I'll put all this in the link, uh, link in the description, but plasma, they make the fiber light blocks. So this thing they've given us, it shows you all the different scenarios. You've got the 100 mil cavity, what's involved. You've got block and render. You've got 150 mil cavity. Obviously, it shows fiber light blocks and all of them, but they're, they're our block of choice because they've, they're just as good as thermalites. They're probably cheaper than thermalites. They have the structural integrity of a concrete block, but they keep thermal in as a thermalite block would. Yeah, they look like concrete blocks, but I think it's blown clay and then they're fired. Very hard to cut. You'll never see cracks in a, in a fiber light wall. You'll always see cracks down the aerated block walls like thermalites and celcons, those really light blocks. Everyone knows what they're like. Lovely to build with because they're nice and light, but pretty useless when it comes to structural stability, structural integrity. But um, definitely worth trying to get hold of that or, or go onto their website. That's absolutely fantastic. I think we use... That's the one we use. So we've got 150 canal dry therm. 0.32. Now, there's a lot of people, a lot of builder builders that don't like the idea of using 150 cavity. Because obviously, obviously you're losing 100 mil off your width and 50 mil off your depth. You can go with 100 mil with the fiber lights, but you have to use 60 mil insulated plasterboards, which are a lot harder to install and very, very expensive. So the costs sort of even themselves out. Other builders don't like um, the full fill stuff that we use, the, the, um, the mineral wool. I've used it since my apprenticeship, never had a problem with it. I personally like using it. It's easy, it's easy to handle, easy to cut. You're not taping it. And also, I've always done brickwork first. I know a lot of people do it the opposite way around. I don't like doing block work first. And if you're gonna use the, the PIR stuff or the foil stuff, uh, you can get that from 90 up to 95 mil. You have 95 mil insulation and a five mil cavity, which we did do with A&E, didn't we? I'll show a few pictures of that. But um, the insulation's expensive, the tape is expensive, and you've got the extra time. And I, I'm always worried about getting the openings slightly out with the block work. So you've got um, the extra time, the extra expense. On the subject of the PIR boards, we've got to do block work first, and then you get up to a certain height, you put, you've got to insulate it, you've got to put your frisbees on, or flying saucers, whatever people call them, the discs. 
you've got to tape it, tape all the joints. Some of it, um, some of it's cut, so when you fold it around the corners, it actually seals. I've used that stuff before. It used to be 40, 50 mil, now it's getting bigger and bigger, so the cavity's getting smaller and smaller. And um, if you're doing up to a party wall or up against a fence or close to extension, there's no way you can do the block work first. There's no physical way of doing it. So you've got to do the brickwork first. And the only way of doing that then is um, you can't fix the insulation against the brickwork. You never get as flat a surface as the block work. And um, your insulation is actually touching the outside skin then. So you've got to use the mineral wool because that's the only other way around it. Um, if you know any different, let us know in the comments. So the only trouble with these new regulations is you have to dig, obviously you have to dig a wider foot in and get wider trench, depends on how you do your foundations, we use trench blocks, we have to find wider trench block that will have a 350 mil? 350. We have to so find the dig, we now have to dig 650. So the dig is now 650 and we have to have 350 trench block. And obviously it's getting better at the moment but builders, merchants are still trying to catch up with this so it's a case of just sourcing around which builders merchants have the compliant materials. So that's like one of the struggles at the moment. It's not a struggle for us because luckily for us, Stuart at Fairwoods, he's, we've talked about this about over a year ago and he got straight on board. So he, he stocks the blocks, he stocks the lintels. Not everybody stocks the lintels yet. He, um, I'm not sure if they stocked the insulation yet. The insulation is harder to get hold of and the the one fifty cavity closures they're hard to get hold of. Get the one get the hundred mil in anywhere, but the one fifties we've ended up using wicks for them. Um which are quite reasonable. I think about ten or ten or each for I think three meters. Two point four. And but, it, but they fit in the van anyway, I think it must be two point four they fit in the van. Yeah. And insula insulation like that said it's still a bit difficult to get a hold of so <clears throat> you can either get lucky in some builders merchants or you have to order it specially. We actually use Selco because it's in stock all the time and it's quite handy to get hold of. And just while we're on the topic of the insulation, well, you, if you're using the cavity bats like we do, the specific one you have to buy is the 0 0.32 because that is uh, denser and more... Denser, right? Warmer. It's, yeah. <laughs> the 0 0.32 is denser and warmer because the one we used to use was 0.37, which doesn't meet the U value. Yeah, to give an example, it's um, it's probably half the price for the 0.37 and when you open a pack of 0.37 at 150 I think you get six in a pack because it's, it's not as dense so they can shrink wrap it down to the same size because the packs are all the same size but you open the what, what the uh, 0.32 and you only get four sheets per pack so you've got to take that into consideration the extra cost and how many there are per pack it was, it'll tell you on the pack how many square meters is in a pack and obviously when you work your brick work out, you've got 60 brick per square metre. So if you've got 600 brick, that's 10 square metres. So you need 10 square metres of insulation. Sorry. Right, next we're going to talk about steels. Because um, the big thing now is knocking the back out of people's houses and having big bifold doors. And also on a lot of extensions we do, they have bifold doors. So obviously big wide openings. So you need a big steel across the top. So you can get lintels, quite big lintels, but... It's very expensive and it's cheaper to do the steel, but obviously steels, usually um, an RSJ, I'll click a link or picture, with a plate welded on. So you've got your RSJ for your internal, for your roof to go onto, and then you have a plate welded on. So you've got this plate welded on that's wide enough to, to go across the cavity so you can get your face work across the front or whatever you're putting across. But what that means is you've got this piece of steel that runs from the outside through to the inside above the door. That's a big cold bridge in itself, because obviously steel is a good conductor of heat and cold. Now, um, I'll put an, obviously another link in the description, but Dell the Tall Carpenter, he's come up with a clever way of um, cladding the steel. Instead of just sticking plasterboard around it and plastering it, he's, uh, he uses the hardy backer that you use in bathrooms and showers and, keep, and um, wet rooms. And that stuff is like a foam. So in itself, it's, it's, it's insulates. And when he sticks it on, he dabs it on so it has a little bit of an air gap around it so it can breathe to avoid condensation. And then once that stuff's on, you can um, clad it with plasterboard and plaster it, obviously. 
But um, I'll leave a link for that. It's a really good video and definitely worth checking out. Because it's a good way of meeting these requirements if you need to put a steel in. Yeah. Because like you say, sometimes... It's a bit of a grey area, that, because it is a... They're trying to... Cold bridging is the big is the big enemy at the moment. And a steel is just a massive cold bridge. And they're just it's just trying to work their way around it. It's, it's Again, it's new rules, so they've got to find ways around them. But um, Dell's idea is really good and definitely worth a look. Link in the description or in um, that way. Yeah. And one last thing we want to touch on is we're going back down now, back to below the slab. So obviously, that's the other big thing as well is making sure the uh, your ground is, uh, your floor is insulated as well. So we used to use 125 mil jab light for our insulation under the slab. Jab light is a brand name. But basically, it's polystyrene. Thank you. Um, but if we were still wanted to use the Jab Light polystyrene insulation, we'd have to go to 160. Minimum. Minimum. And they don't make 160. It, they either do it They do it in factors of 50. Or 25s. So yeah. you, you can either go 150 and then it jumps up to 175 because you've put a 25mm strip. But it's messing about. And by the time you go into the really thick jab light it starts to get expensive so it sort of brings you back down to the same price as the 100 mil PIR boards which is the one we use now extra therm kingspan sellotex everyone knows that stuff so we use the 100 the 100 100 mil PIR boards that obviously reduces the amount of insulation you need under don't just cut that bit out we have had people in the comments tell us that they have to use 150 but up here it's still under at the moment but I could see it going to 150 eventually. But obviously the thicker the insulation, the more you've got to dig out to get your depth for your hardcore, etc. And But one of the most important things when you're doing insulation is, first off, you have to have two layers of DPM. One straight on top of your hardcore and sand blinding, and the insulation sits on that. That protects the PIR from getting any damp. And then one over the top, because obviously that's where your concrete's being poured. But in between your walls and your layer of DPM, you need a cold bridging strip, which we just use, we use 25 mil jab light insulation, and we cut that down to slot. In 200 mil strips. Yeah. So that it's, um, you've got the 100 mil for your slab, and then 100 mil drops down below the insulation. So when you put the boards in, it clamps into place. So it won't move. We'll show like a picture or a video of, of an example. Yeah, we used, to, we used to cut 100 mil strips and you're putting it in, it's just all falling over. But the, the 200 mil strips, it goes right down. It also protects the end of the PIR board as well. If you've got polished down at the end of it. And obviously that stops any cold trying to come in through the outside with that bridge in the way. I'm not sure if they do it anymore, but um, I have seen a few times where the insulation, when you start building from DPC on the superstructure, the insulation has to drop, I think, 150 below below the DPC. And I think I think the cold bridging strip is just another alternative to that. I'm not sure if he has to do both. But we don't have to do that. We're not told to do that with the insulation. It's obviously a bit harder to do that with um, mineral wool because it, it's, 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 it's our first piece sits on the tower as a DPC. So that's it. So if you're going below DPC, it's a bit more difficult to hold it in position. So it's a pain in the ass, basically. And that just about covers it for what we have to offer. Obviously, it's the absolute basics. Yeah, these is, this is just the basics of how we... These are just the rules we apply when we're doing our extensions. If you need any more information like this, we're going to leave plenty of links in the description to the government website describing the building regulations. We're going to leave one, hopefully, for plasma for the... There you go. Get yourself one of these. And if you can't, we're going to leave the link to the description. We're going to leave a link to this. So you I can should imagine you can download. Sorry, sorry, Alex. I should imagine you can download it off the website. So but try and get yourself one of them. Get one or download one. You check your local builders, merchants or material suppliers because it was, it was from our local one. We actually picked a few of these up and was handing these out to other... Anyone who wanted one. Yeah. <laughs> and we're going to leave some links to some of our other videos showing how we execute these 
requirements in our extensions. We're going to leave a link for Dell the Tall Carpenter with his method of solving the coal bridging problem with RSJ steels. And any other links? Oh, we'll stick them in when we've, as and when. Yeah. So for any extra information or any references, be sure to check our link that all the links down below. We'll have them labeled. You just click on the ones you need. So that will be it for our basic cover of the Partel Conservation of Fuel and Power Building Regulations. Thank you very much for watching. Thank you. Yep. <coughs> Do you change your glasses? No. You sure? Let me work once, so. Yeah, we not to work, eh? Hey? Mm, work gear, talking just about work. The other one just looks smarter. I'm not, I'm not going upstairs. Okay. What are you trying to say? Do I, look, do I look good in my videos? I'll blow your glasses out then. Like um, Spy Kids, George Clooney's guy is, is um, removable. <laughs> Eye blacker. George Clooney? He was the president in Spy Kids. And then there's at the end of the first movie. George Clooney? Yeah. You sure? Yeah. He was the president and he was there with blacked out eyes. Then he takes it off because it's like glasses. Right. Right, anyway. That's, that's, a, that's a bit you need to get rid of already. So back then, oh, I'm looking out there. I keep looking out there instead of looking there. So, so back then, I did it again.